So many students aren't optimising their revision for each subject they take. This means it takes them longer to revise, meaning they have less time to do the things they actually want to do and could lead to them getting burnt out more quickly. Overall, it just causes problems. However, I have a solution. This video is going to be the quickest, most comprehensive guide to how you need to revise specifically for every subject you take. You should watch this video by skipping to the subjects you take, taking notes on what I say and making sure to implement them. So many students are under the impression that you can't revise for English language, but that's actually not the case. There is a very effective and optimal way to revise, and it starts first of all by trying to simulate what you're going to do in the exam and, and practicing those skills. This starts with being able to identify common literary techniques. You need to start by first making a list of the common techniques that always appear in English language exams and in every text you do. This will be your similes, repetition, personification, metaphors. Being able to easily recognize this will just make sure that you're in a good position for English. But to take yourself to the next level, you need to first of all learn and understand the complex techniques that not many students are going to know. This is going to make your analysis stand out. I would say make a list of these, put them in a document and memorize them and, and practice being able to recognize them and analyze them well. This will definitely make you stand out from the crowd. For English language, again like other subjects like history and economics, you need to be answering every question in a very specific way. This is even more important for English language because you'll be capped at certain marks if you don't pose your sentences in a certain way. And so, in order to make sure your revision is optimised, you need to go to your exam board, go to the assessment objectives and know exactly what they're looking for in every single question. I did this so that I knew how to tailor each answer for every question to what the examiner wants to see. And by doing this, you don't waste time learning wrong techniques for different questions. Once you do this, practice the timings for all the questions and get your teacher to mark the practices that you've done. It's always good to have feedback which you can implement to improve. For the 40 mark essays, you need to first of all create an essay that you think covers a wide range of prompts. Ask your teacher to mark this and then work on the feedback that you get given. Implement this and then try and make the best possible essay you can. Try aim for the top band of marks if you're aiming for a grade 9. Once you've done this, memorise this essay. Memorise this essay so that if it comes up or in the exam or anything similar comes up, you're able to just recall it, completely put it on the page and it's easy. Another additional thing to make your revision really effective is to memorise how to twist this essay to many different prompts so that you're able to use it if something not so similar comes up. Because you already know it's good quality, you can just tweak it a bit and you know you're guaranteed a good grade. And an underrated tip for maximising your mark in English language while using the least amount of time to revise is perfecting your SPAG. SPAG is something that you don't need to memorise a lot of content for, but it's actually worth a surprising amount of marks in the exam. This is something that I didn't do, and I think if I could have really focused on my SPAG, I would have been able to get more marks. Just make sure that when you're writing your answers, you're not just writing nonsense and not using punctuation properly, but you're actually reading through it, checking it, just to gain those extra little marks. These are extra marks you can gain without putting in a lot of effort, so make sure you're trying to pick them up. The optimal way to revise for English Lit is, first of all, watching summaries and videos on your text so you know exactly what's going on, where and when. And then you need to be getting a list of every single character and every single theme in the essay and making an essay plan on this. But you need to prioritise. You need to go to the past papers and create a priority list based on what topics haven't come up and what characters are major. If there's a major character that hasn't come up yet, it's highly likely that it could be your essay. And so you need to make sure that is one of your best plans and you've memorised that really well. This will make sure that you're revising the high yield topics more significantly than others to make sure that you're not wasting time memorising a little minor character that's very unlikely to come up. Then you need to create the adaptable essay plans that I talk about, which will be my next video. But in short, this is just creating essay plans that use paragraphs that can be used for many different essay titles so that you limit the number of paragraphs you're making and so that meaning you don't have to spend as much time doing English. To really take your English to the next level, you need to be using the contextual links effectively and seamlessly within your paragraphs. Good context can really make the difference in your essay and it's not, and it doesn't require that much effort. So make sure you're getting the high level context and trying to implement it in as many places as possible in your essay. Because one, this doesn't require that much memorization or effort. And two, it can really set you apart. So it's a no brainer. Lastly, tips on exam technique are one, get the right structure. And then also practice your essays on the timed conditions to make sure that first of all you know the optimal order for yourself because some people are different some people like doing the section b before the section a others like doing it in the correct order by practicing you'll be able to find out what order maximizes your marks and what is most appropriate for you and lastly the most important tip make sure you're regularly revisiting your essay plans making sure that you've memorized them well and you're able to just quickly write them in the exam even when you're tired even when you're stressed 
by doing this, it will mean you're always going to perform in the exam. You're going to perform on the day and get the grade you want. And you won't be disappointed on results day. For science, the most optimal method is simple. You just need to learn the content, recall the content and apply the content. Now you have to remember that this subject is mostly based on memorization, so the hard part is getting the information into your long-term memory. I'd say for the first step in learning the information, using free science lessons, Cognito or PMT would be your best bets. Use these resources carefully and try and make sure all the information you're learning aligns with your specification and that you're covering every specification point. This is very important for making sure you have a comprehensive understanding of everything that can come up. The second part of the triple science effective method of revision is recall. This is where active recall and spatial repetition comes into play. You need to use your favourite method of active recall, whether this is blurting, Anki flashcards or whatever form you'd want to use. And make sure you hammer this, making sure the information goes into your memory and interleaving spaces between your revision sessions so that your revision is eased into your long-term memory. Once you've done this, you can move on to the third stage of the triple science framework, which would be applying the knowledge. This is where you repeatedly do past paper questions, including practice questions from PMT, any practice questions in your textbook, and the official past papers. Once you've done a lot of these questions, you'll notice how repetitive science GCSE papers are and soon start memorising the mark scheme for those common high yield topics. Once you've done this, you can pretty much guarantee yourself a good grade in the subject. The only difficult bit is making sure you're able to memorise all the information before your first exam so that you don't struggle in the paper two. Because I know a lot of people who would have won a grade nine in the paper one exam and then struggle to get a similar grade in paper two because they were way less confident with the content. So make sure to try to cover all of it before your first exam. Maths. This is a subject that so many people struggle with. If you seem to be struggling with maths, the way you need to approach this is first identify your weaknesses. Maths Genie has a comprehensive list of all topics that come up in Edexcel GCSE Maths. Go to that list and identify the ones you can't do, working your way up each grade. Once you find a topic you are not sure on, watch a video on it, then answer all the questions. Once you've done this multiple times for all the topics that you need to learn, you can then start attempting past papers. But you can't just go and spam past papers without making any improvement in each of them. Otherwise, you're going to see yourself stagnating at the same grade the whole time. Instead, what you need to do is complete a past paper, then mark it harshly and at the top of the past paper at the front, write down the grade you got, but also what you lost every mark on. This will be each individual topic. And if you rank this from most to least, you'll see the topics you need to work on most desperately. Start from the top, work your way down and try another past paper and you'll see guaranteed improvement. If you repeatedly do this, there's no reason why you shouldn't get your target grade in maths. Useful resources for this would be GCC Maths Tutor for videos, Maths Genie for questions, Corbett Maths, and many other different YouTubers that you can find. A tip for all grade students is don't underestimate how much practice you need to do. When revising for maths, your revision should be very practice dominated. If not, then you're not revising effectively and most likely wasting your time which is not something you want to be doing with less than 50 days left to your exams. For economics, the most optimal way to revise is first of all knowing how to answer specific questions. Especially with the OCR qualification, some of the questions require specific structures in order for you to gain more than half marks. And so knowing these structures and knowing when and where to use these different techniques would be the most important thing in securing a good grade. The next most important thing is the content. Make sure you know all the content, but you don't need to memorise everything in those lengthy books because the textbooks have a lot of unnecessary information. I would suggest going off relevant YouTube videos and the specification to know exactly what you need to need and how much of it that you need to know. You'd be surprised how much of an exam paper comes directly from specification prompts, so I definitely suggest you to check this out. Another additional tip to make sure your economics revision is as optimal as possible is to make sure you learn all your graphs and know how to analyse them well. I know from experience that you can get 6 out of 6 in OCR 6 marker questions from simply drawing the right graph and analysing it correctly. And so you need to make sure you're well versed with your graphs so you're able to pick up these marks easily and focus on the harder questions. Some specific resources for economics would obviously be Econ Plus Dow, the GOAT, the best YouTuber you should definitely watch if you're really trying to get those top grades. But also Mr Goff who's specific to the OCR qualification and really good at explaining things in a simple way. Also closer to the exam, make sure to look out for predictions on what topics are going to come up because these are actually quite accurate and very useful. For religious studies, the most effective way to revise would again be active recall and spatial repetitions. However, you need to be careful when making your flashcards. Many exam boards are quite particular with the way you answer questions. 
much like other subjects such as economics and history. And so you need to make sure you're checking with your teacher and with the exam board using the specification or mark schemes on how the examiner wants to see you've answered the question. Once you've done this, tailor your flashcards towards these points so that you can make sure what you're memorising will be effective and something that you can easily pull out and just write on the page to get easy marks. You want to memorise all these flashcards and then move on to the strict time condition pass papers. This will give you real life practice for how the exam's going to be because especially with exams like RE where you have to do quite a lot of writing, you need to make sure you are up to speed with answering the questions. You don't want to have to not do well in an exam because you weren't able to finish because you hadn't practiced enough under time conditions even though you had all the knowledge. That'd be the worst case scenario. For the longer 12 to 15 mark essays, first of all learn all the content, practice the structure and repeatedly practice questions, giving them to your teacher to mark so you can get accurate feedback as well. And lastly, another note on RE is quotes. From what I remember from completing my RS GCSE, quotes aren't as big of a deal as people make them out to seem. And so don't stress about memorising all the different quotes from the religious texts you do. Instead, just make sure you have a general idea for quotes for every topic because you can paraphrase them and you don't need to get them exact. Just make sure not to do anything offensive or harmful because you'll probably get marked down for that. Before we get into any tips on how to revise for GCSEP, I'd say there are two important things you need to factor to make sure you're achieving the best grade possible. One, the sports you choose, making sure it's a sport that you know you're good at and the coursework. I'd say my choice of sports was definitely where I made a mistake. I chose badminton instead of a sport like basketball where I would have performed much better in and this eventually led to me getting an 8 instead of a 9 but that's not the point. Just make sure that you choose the right sports that you know you can do well in and maximise your marks so you don't have to try as much in revising. Obviously try your hardest but so you can allocate more time to other subjects. And also on the topic of coursework, just make sure you're putting as much effort into your coursework as possible and perhaps asking someone in the year above you who did well to see their coursework. Not to copy or anything, but just to know how you're supposed to structure it and what sort of content you're supposed to put in. Also make sure you're regularly speaking with your teacher so that you know that your coursework's good and you're not going to get a low grade. Moving on to the revision tips, I'd say first you just need to go to the specification, see exactly what you need to know and what will you... I'd say the first thing you need to do is go to the specification and find out exactly what you need to know and what you'll be tested on. Turn these into flashcards, memorise these flashcards, apply the knowledge and you're done. Once you've done this on multiple past papers, you'll realise again how repetitive questions are in GCSE PE. Although there may not be too many past papers, so make sure not to waste them. Make sure you're using times, conditions and marking yourself harshly so you know where you're actually at. And then, again like all the other topics, note down what you're getting wrong, your weaknesses and focus on those. Go over those flashcards again. Maybe watch some videos if you struggle with certain hard topics. Then making a list of where you're dropping marks or where you're struggling on certain content. And then go into perhaps your flashcards, redoing them. Go into the textbook, videos, trying to understand them again. And there's nothing wrong with reattempting a past paper even after you've done it. Although you'll probably remember the answers, it's just good practice and about getting into the flow of completing a paper that's useful. And so it's definitely a useful task to redo a past paper even if you've done it already. It also gives you quite a confidence boost when you get a high grade. And also don't forget to be using active recall and space repetition in your revision of those flashcards. By now you probably know that's a given, so just make sure you're doing that. For GCC Computer Science, although I didn't take the subject, I have advice from my friends who did get grade 9s in it. For Computer Science, it's very important that you're using the full specification. This is so that you make sure you're covering everything that you could possibly be tested on so that there's no surprises in the exam. Knowing that you've revised everything, makes going into the exam a lot less nerve wracking and a lot less stressful because you know that you can't be taken aback by anything. You realistically should know every question that comes up or at least know some of the content to help you answer the question. You should also use YouTube videos for content and make flashcards from YouTube channels such as Craig and Dave. Make sure to complete all the past papers because much like all the other subjects, the questions are very repetitive. Also use YouTube videos to understand key concepts like the fetch, decode and execute cycle. Don't forget to practice your flowcharts and practice your coding on websites such as Code Academy. Again, for GCC Geography, although I didn't take the subject, I have tips from my friends who got grade nines. Firstly being, Keep your case study notes separate from your actual notes related to the exam content. This makes it easier to revise specific examples which you can then apply to content in exam questions. Make sure you're using the most effective ways to revise which would be flashcards for active recall and your key terms and definitions 
Bistrography has a lot of key terms that you need to memorize precisely so you can pick up those easy marks. So don't forget that. Additionally, you have to practice your map skills regularly. You need to be confident with OS maps, grid references, and scales because these often appear in exams. Additionally, another very important tip to make sure your vision is optimized is know the difference between the different exam command questions and make sure you know how to answer them. This is so that you can make sure you're hitting all the specification points without wasting time writing answers that aren't going to gain you any benefit. Know the difference between describe or explain or assess or evaluate so you can tailor your exams accordingly. This all relates to exam technique, which links onto my next point about past papers. You need to use past papers and use the mark schemes. This helps you get familiar with the exam style and helps you understand how to phrase answers effectively. Another underrated tip to make sure your vision is optimal and effective is to make sure you learn how to make connections between human and physical geography. This is a technique that you can be rewarded for using. And so make sure you learn how to do this effectively so that you're actually writing down phrases and connections that you know will get you marks. This also ties in with being able to use diagrams effectively. Practice drawing and labeling clear, accurate diagrams, for example, coastal processes or rock cycles, as these often accompany your written answers. Additionally, make sure you master the written answer technique. By practicing the structure of long answer questions with clear points and evidence, including case studies, you'll be able to gain full marks in these longer questions, which allow you access to those higher grades without wasting your time, perhaps memorizing loads of content, when instead you can just master long questions. For GCC history, in order to make your revision most effective and optimal, you need to prioritize analytical skills over memorization. This is a mistake that I made. Instead of practicing the key skills that you actually get rewarded for, I spent all my time trying to memorize every fact in the textbook. And memorizing all this content was so time consuming and definitely was not worth it when I could have put this into other subjects or just relaxing and having a better time. For history, it's really important to learn the structure of each of the questions, for example. Each question type, whether it's explain, evaluate or source analysis, will require a specific structure. Missing this can cap your marks, no matter how detailed your knowledge is. Additionally, it's really important to practice timed answers so that you get used to the structure of the paper, maybe find out what order is best for you and what you're most effective at, so that when you get into the exam, you're not experimenting, but you have a proven method that you know will work so you can just get in there do the job and get your grade additionally another underrated point is understanding how the whole story fits together you need to focus on a broader narrative including causes consequences and the links between events because this will help you form the coherent and analytical arguments that the examiners are looking for additionally a way you can do this is by using timelines and mind maps these will help you really connect all the different events together and reinforce your understanding of the chronology of whatever book you're doing and in longer essays make sure you work on your evaluation skills and your judgment skills having a balanced and supported judgment at the end is arguably the most important thing because without this you can definitely be capped at low marks make sure you're writing practice essays talking to your teacher and making sure that you're refining your work to the point where you know how to write the perfect judgment at the end, just so you know you're able to secure the maximum marks for that essay. In terms of actually learning the content, use active recall space repetition to learn a few facts to make sure you can actually enhance your essays. However, if you really want your revision to be most effective and the least time consuming, go to the specification, especially for Edexcel. You'll have a complete comprehensive list of everything you need to know for the exam. And go to your teacher and you'll know exactly how much you need to know for each bullet point. Put that into flashcards and just memorize that. After you've got it all in your brain, make sure you just focus on these analytical skills, get that all fixed and you'll be good. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and make sure to like and subscribe for more GCSE help as we get closer to exams.